and finally your much awaited low carb cane cake is here only a third of this bowl of cane cake contains carbohydrates two thirds of it content is literally carb free you will love this hello hello and welcome to the flourishing plate here at the flourishing plate we try to um, reduce the amount of carbohydrates that we put in our meals uh, to help our body to flourish more and so i have come your way this afternoon with something beautiful something innovative um, and very very african to be precise Ghanaian. Okay, my name is Lady Becky. If you have just bumped into this video, I'll entreat you to first and foremost subscribe to this channel so that every time I upload an African keto low carb diet, you will have the notification um, and you will have the pleasure of watching me at the comfort of the zoo of your home. So please subscribe to this channel and let's grow something beautiful. Thank you. We're going to go to the um, what I've got on the display to show you the ingredients before we start cooking. But don't forget, once more, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Thank you. which is going to be the wrappers for the cane cake that I'm going to do. Okay, so I've got my, my puree here. It's all turned into a puree now. Now I'm going to mix everything together. So here is my coconut dough goes in, um, then in goes my little amount of um, corn dough. I could have actually done without it, but I'm just going to see how it goes with that little amount of corn dough in there. Then I've got my oat flour, and then now I'm going to blend it all in nicely. And divide. Right, so now I'm going to add one teaspoon of psyllium husk. It's almost got now. Let me make it too. It's up to you how you want it to find. But um, the more psyllium has powder you put in, um, the thicker it becomes. Because it's, it's an um, absorber of uh, water, so it does then require you to put in more water. So you see what I've got now? I've got a nice, beautiful paste of, as you can see, so I've got my beautiful uh, paste, like this is my emory. be the base but I want it to cool off 
thing is if you don't do it whilst it is hot it gets hard just like normal cane cake because coconut flour actually absorbs lots and lots of water and then don't forget we've also added in some amount of psyllium husk powder because I really want it to be sticky as much as possible so now that I've mixed it with the cold part now I can use my hand so it's coming into shape nicely and it, this is just the texture I'm looking for so in effect the, the part the one third that we cooked on fire um, halfway through the aflata is going to help the rest to bind when you put it in the corn husk so you really need to knead through it mash it all together and um, when you know you know <laughs> and then you form your dough nicely so you make it into your yeah, desired balls as you like them um, with the sizes it's totally up to you you have to cut your sizes of balls to please um, according to how much you can take per portion with my mixture I had six balls eventually out of it but don't forget that each ball you take has two thirds of the component from coconut flour dough and sauerkraut which is the um, fermented cabbage and then a third of it is comprised of coconut sorry oatmeal flour and condo combined which is the carb content so it's not too bad i did not add any salt to it because of the sauerkraut um, actually um, it's the salt that makes the cabbage ferment i have a separate video of how i ferment my cabbage but that's it uh, so let's learn how to actually mold the kenke as you can see um, so you take the husk, put it in according to the size, how many husks it can take. But the, the, the art is in the twisting and the turning at the same time with both hands as you can see in the video. Then you part a space between two husks and then push the tail end into it nicely. Obviously you need to support it with both hands to make sure that everything goes intact nicely. So that's one ball made got our bowls all molded nicely pan laid nicely with lots and lots of husk to support it and keep it from burning lots of water has gone in already and there's more going to go in as the cooking process continues remember it's going to sit on fire for approximately two hours and this requires lots and lots of water so from time to time you check it and add more water to it until it is soft and tender and that I say is about two hours time so there we go okay so our kenke has been sitting on fire for about two hours uh, with me checking from time to time and adding lots of water then after two hours when I turned off the fire it's actually been resting for about half an hour for it to set in Ghana we call it a home fry and here is the end product look at that so gluey so sticky like just every other kinky actually this kinky came out better than the actual one that I make with all emory for the family I'm so proud of myself come and join me okay and let's have fun <laughs>